everybody. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Your mic. It's good to see all your smiling faces. I want to welcome all the visitors here today. Your mic. It's on where it's red. The red's not a green. Try again. never a time 
in, in history, history past, history future, whatever, uh, that God was without his word. You know, he has always had his word. People take little, little bits of uh, scripture that, that seem to say something and they try to twist it into something totally wrong. Jesus Christ is God. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Amen. Jesus Christ is the creator of all things. Amen. Is He not? Amen. And, and this wonderful person puts on human flesh. Stop it. Just try to wrap your mind around that. That God loves us so much that he would wrap himself in the same kind of equipment that we have. You know, he hungered and he thirsted. He was tired. I'm sure he had sore muscles and his feet ached. You know, and he had to deal with people that were very difficult. And he loved them regardless of how they were. I mean, I don't know about grace like he knows grace, but Judas comes to him in the garden and, he, and he's betraying him. And what does Jesus say? Friend. Friend. I mean, if you knew what he was doing to you, would you call him friend? You know, as we're going to see here, as we go down through this, that he never, he never moved out in his own will. He gave his will completely to his father. And he did his father's will and his father's works. And he's, he's telling us to do the same thing. He's telling us we can have the same kind of blessings. That we can love people that are absolutely unlovable. Just the way he did. We can care the way he cared. We can have sorrow the way he had sorrow. Can you imagine the depth Sorrow that Jesus knew. The Bible calls him the man of sorrows. You know, I, I think that's why country music is so popular because nothing touches you like sorrow. And country music's got a lot of sorrow. You know, people can relate to that. It touches them somewhere nothing else touches you. You know, I, there's a lot of sorrow in this world. And what I first read is very sorrowful to me. To think that people sit in church every week and they're not ready. You know, th this thing is going to ramp up. And God will have a people that are going to vindicate his name. <coughs> it's the only way this thing can end. It's the only way. It's going to happen. And you know why I know it's going to happen? Because this word has never failed. Jesus Christ is the word. And he said it's going to happen. Amen? Amen. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. <coughs> you hear that? And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Comprehended it or apprehended it. Darkness can never overtake light. Do you understand that? God is light. There is no darkness in him. There's no shadow of turning. There can never be. Because light completely conquers darkness. Always. It never fails. You, you know why God can't lie? Because if he says it, it is. Think about that. The Bible says God, there's some things God can't do, and lie is one of them. He doesn't speak idle words like men do. You know, we like to fill the earth up with words. God, when he speaks, it means something. It's going to happen. God forbid that he would think or say something about us. It's not, it's not what we want to hear. But let's take, for instance, that he does say something that we don't want to hear. Do we fight and argue with him? Or do we get down on our knees and agree with him? And say, thank you, help us. Change us. Make and mold us into your image. Because that's where real victory comes. That's, that's what I really want to talk about here today. 
I, I know the sermon title is, um, what, do you, what do you got down there? Anybody? How shall we choose us a leader? Right? Who is this leader? It's Jesus. Right? How did Jesus choose leaders? Look, at who did he have trouble with? <laughs> the leaders, right? You know, um, all through the Bible you can look through and you can find how God chose leaders. He found people who were humble. I mean, how, how did this church begin? It began out of, a, out of a great disappointment by many different church people that came together, right? Baptists, Methodists, all these different people. They were waiting on Jesus to come and they really believed that he was coming in 1844, right? But he didn't come, did he? So what happened? A great, terrible disappointment, right? So what do you think happened to most of these people? So were they really ever really in it? Were they in it to win it? As my friend Jamie used to say, remember that big love he used to come to this church? Poor man died way too early. I miss that man every day. I'm sick and tired of death. I hate it. It's an enemy. All right? This is the only power the devil has, and it's death. Okay? And he had no power over Jesus Christ. Because even though Jesus Christ took upon our sins and he was required to die because he did that, <coughs> sin had no hold on him. No hold. There's, his grave is empty, brothers and sisters. And he wants to come back. He wants to come back so bad. He, he wants to rip this world wide open and tip it all upside down because this world is upside down. I'm telling you, we're going to see a new dimension when Jesus comes. Almost like zipping up a zipper and you just rip it into a whole new thing. You just brand new. Things you never even dreamed possible. You know, we, we talk about three-dimensional. We see three-dimensional things on our phone and we can't imagine how beautiful the picture is. It wasn't that long ago. I know most of us can remember the old TVs with the little dot. You had to wait, like, seem like a half an hour for me to go. Imagine what this new world will be. Brand new dimension. You know, the other worlds are allowed to see us. Angels are allowed to see in this big drama that plays out on this earth, this sin experiment, let's call it, if you will. We can't see out. God wants to make this his center of his government. I've been thinking about that. This lowly little planet that's went off all by itself and went, up and went away from God. Everywhere else in the universe and beyond what you could even imagine, <coughs> everything does God's will. But not this place. Not this earth. But yet, He, for us, gave us His Son, Jesus Christ. To take on flesh forever. And his government will land on this planet. You think about this city that God talks about. If you study it out, you're, you're almost talking about a state the size of Colorado as one city. About 365 miles long and wide. But this city is also 365 high. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a city like that? And God has a place for you there. A place. Your Sabbath home, if you will. You know, here a lot of people don't have two homes. But there they will. They're going to have a beautiful Sabbath home in that great, glorious city. And you can have a place wherever your little heart desires. Imagine that. And, and so many of us sell out in this world for what? For peanuts? For nothing. This world has nothing to offer. Absolutely nothing. It's terrible. It just steals everything from you. Jesus was not shaping for one moment. Not for one moment. 
He constantly was the conqueror. He conquered sin, death, and the devil through his father. He's asking us to do the same very thing. So what is it about us that causes us to, to be in unbelief? He has said it. Why don't we believe it? Because if we did believe it, we'd be living in it. Amen. We'd be moving it. The world isn't waiting for people to go knocking on the door, beating everybody over the head with the Bible. They're not looking for you to shout the gospel from the rooftop. They're looking for people to live the gospel. Amen. When they see that sight, it will be so attractive. Do you know how Jesus could... Just imagine this. When he's cleansing the temple and he's made this like cord of ropes and he's, and he's just... The people are scattering like cockroaches because they know they're wrong. And he just has this holy, righteous indignation for his father's house. And at this very moment that he's doing this, these people run away like cockroaches, but the little children are running to him because they're not afraid. Why are they not afraid? They, you know, the Bible talks about save us from the wrath of the lamb. Have you ever seen a lamb? A lamb is tender. A lamb wouldn't hurt anything. You know, God used that as, a, as an object lesson in the Jewish economy. They, they would take this lamb in their home. They would love on this animal. The children would be, it would become their pet. The mother and father would tend to this and feed it. And it would be something that they would have to ultimately take its life because of sin. So that they could understand the ramifications of what sin is and what it causes. God says the wages of sin are death. Do you think it's his will that any should die? None. It's God ultimately is the one who suffers in eternity with all his children that are missing. Amen. Because our memories, maybe we might forget, forget, because it says he's going to wipe away every tear, so I think we're going to probably forget. Right? But will he forget? How can God forget? Nobody thinks about his suffering. You know, those are his children out there. No matter what they look like, who they are, what they do, he loves each and every one of them. And he loves them just as much as he loves you. Yeah. We need to have more grace for our brothers and sisters. Yeah. We do. we got to love on each other. And if we don't agree with one another, then hey, that's okay. We still need to love one another. We don't have to see everything the same way. You know, that's just not going to happen. But we are commanded to love one another. And that love will bond us together. And we, God's looking for an army. Brothers and sisters, that's what he's looking for. He's looking for an army of Christians that are moving as one man. Yeah. Think about that look. Think about how beautiful that would be. Everybody here in this place, together as one, moving as one man, with each person's thought as better than themselves, seeking to help and lift up one another. That's the way heaven is, brothers and sisters. That's the way it works in another dimension, in a different world. God wants to bring that here where nobody has to step on somebody so that they can get a little higher like it is in this world. This world's a horrible place. It really is. It's terrible. Let us continue to read. Verse 5, And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. You know who this man John was? What did Jesus call this man John? Huh? Yeah, he called him the greatest prophet that ever lived, didn't he? What was his job? To prepare the way. Right? To prepare the way. 
Thinking about the time when Jesus came. His timing was perfect. You know? I mean, you can study out this Bible and you find 2,000 years goes by and, and sin has, has come full circle. It's perfected, if you will. It happened in the antediluvian world and God wiped it away. He wiped it away. He found, he found grace in Noah and eight people walked into the ark. But I don't think eight people wanted to walk into the ark in their hearts. They physically walked. But I don't know that their hearts actually walked in there. God, the, the whole planet is, is reborn, so to speak, from Noah. So listen, we all come from Noah. Hello. There was only eight that got on the ark. I don't care if you want to come up with some crazy stuff about the beginning, which is nuts. It's not in the Bible. People teach some really nuts stuff. But anyways, Jesus comes on the scene 2,000 years later after another. <coughs> right? Amen. The world is right back into the same place. Jesus stays. He stops this. The Bible says that with 12 men, the world is turned upside down. The gospel, it says, has gone to the whole world. How many people do you hear? How many churches teach you, well, all we need is the gospel to go the whole world and we're going to go home? Well, then, are you reading your Bible? Because the gospels went to the whole world. And we're still not home yet. So there has to be something more. Right? There has to be something more. God only raised two churches. There's a church that came out of this great disappointment. It's a church you're sitting in. The Seventh-day Adventist church. And this, this church was built on all those giants before us that, that came with truth. Truth was mined out of the Bible. And people, the reason we have so many de denominations today is because they stand on points of truth. But they don't go forward. We took all of this truth and we went forward with God. But we've been marching around in the desert for what, 170 some years? It's, it's, it's not God's will that we still be here. You know, one door the Bible says was shut and one door was open. Amen. People want to be in this door that was shut. That's what the nominal churches are looking for. Amen. But there's a door that's wide open. What is in that wide open door, brothers and sisters? The sanctuary of Jesus. The Ark of the Covenant, right? A work is being done. What do, you, what do you think about this John the Baptist fella? The Bible says he's the greatest prophet, right? Jesus said it. Who do you think the Seventh-day Adventist Church is? Who do you think we are? We are the modern-day John the Baptist. Who else has this message? Nobody. We are to prepare the way. We are to fill in the whole word. We're supposed to speak the truth in love. But you know, I hear, I've even heard from this pulpit and from too many people that we just gotta, we just gotta love all the other people, you know, and we don't need to really, you know, we just gotta get with, with where we agree with them. Is that what Jesus wants? Did he say that I've come to bring all this harmony and love to everybody? Or did he say I've come to bring a sword? sword. And what is that sword about? It's about truth. What does a cross look like if you just, if you took a sword and you threw it in the ground, what would it look like? It'd look like a cross, wouldn't it? We have, we have a job to do as watchmen on the wall. To speak and teach the love of Christ. But truth sometimes is not always pretty. It hurts. Amen. It hurts. Love hurts, doesn't it? When you really love somebody, it hurts. Let us continue to read. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. 
That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You know, Jesus defeated Satan by living his life among men, and not by loud arguments. Loud arguments are not worth winning. How did Jesus win? He truly cared. I heard somebody say in Sabbath school something to the effect that uh, people don't care about what you know until they know about how much you care. Right? We do have to show love to one another. But we have to speak the truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus always spoke the truth. You know, i got so much here. I'm just not even going to get to it. So let's just skip on. To, let's go to John 8. John chapter 8. Wow. I can't believe time is flying so fast. John 8, verse 12. You all there? Yes, sir. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He Amen. that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. Is this the character of God right here? Amen. It is the character of God. John 14, 6 says what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father, but by him. Amen? Amen. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, this is verse 13, bearest record, thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I come, and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh. I judge no man. And if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father.